Earth. This is what it looked like a long, 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 long time ago. And this is it a long, long, long time ago. These are the British Isles, where Romans came and left, where kingdoms rose and fell, some Vikings invaded, some French people came and stayed, and boom! The year is 1490, and Britain is an empire. No, no. Not yet, Charles. Come on, man. We've been through this. What was an empire? An empire is a group of countries ruled over by a single monarch or ruling power. An empire doesn't need an emperor. The British Empire comprised of Britain, the mother country, and the colonies. Countries ruled to some degree by and from Britain. Well, you may ask yourself, why did Britain want an empire? Because... Money, land, resources, money, land, and more money. <sighs> yeah, they were greedy. So, in 1947, this Italian guy called John Cabot wanted to find shit. Cool shit, and heard England was finding cool new shit. So he met with King Henry VII. No, not that one. That one. Uh, so, my king, I have a very well laid out plan. I hear you want to find shit. Pardon me, sir? I hear you want to find shit. Uh, yes, sir, I go. Find cool shit. And so John Cabot sailed to America five years after this guy discovered this new world. And because England loved money, land, and resources, it quickly began expanding its territory. Here, 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 and here. Meanwhile, in this part of the world, Britain had always been meddling with trade and small skirmishes in the Asia-India area. But in 1757, 50,000 Bengal and French troops fought 3,000 British troops in the Battle of Plassey. And because it rained, and the Mughal cannons weren't covered, the British cannons worked, and the Mughals lost in a decisive British victory. We will never lose. Look at how many people we have and how little they have. Great, Charles. You had to say it, didn't you? The British East India Company was interested in cotton, silk, tea, and opium, but following the Battle of Plassey, they were the military authority there too. By 1770, heavy taxation left the Bengal population famished, with one third of its population dying of hunger. Naturally, India didn't like this, and so India said, No, I don't think I will. And in 1857, India revolted, but a year later surrendered. This woke up Britain, and thus they quickly squashed what remained of the Mughal dynasty, and Britain created the British Raj, and the parts of India that Britain didn't own, they heavily influenced. All of this expansion was bound to tickle someone the wrong way. This led to the Seven Years War, which surprisingly lasted seven years. It was France, Austria, Saxony, Sweden, and Russia against Prussia, Hanover, Britain on the other side. It started because in 1748, a treaty ended the War of Austrian Succession. This left everyone involved unhappy with how it ended. So, another war started for no real reason, and seven years later, Britain now owned this, 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 and this. During this time, England and France fought one another, and by 1775, Britain had now gained a number of new colonies in North and Central America. British victory was important, because now France is angry. Uh-oh, the year is 1773, and the British American colonies didn't like paying tax to this guy, all the way... Way... Over here. And so the Americans said, Fuck it. Let's throw 342 chests of tea into the ocean. Dude, this took me three months. And you threw it into the ocean? For who? For who? The fish? I'm telling! France, noticing all this ruckus, sided with the colonies because you're so angry, so angry, so angry! And so, 13 American colonies joined together to form the United States of America. <laughs> and said no! And kicked Britain out of America. Oh, and also thanks to this thing called Empire. Britain now owned this territory. Oh, and then thanks to a guy called Captain James Cook, Britain now controlled this area too. In 1867, because Canada was a f a fuck ton of kilometers away from England, Britain granted Canada itself governing status, with Australia and New Zealand following suit. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. The year is 1881, and the European powers have realized, oh damn, this big area in the middle of the world map is kind of cool. Let's scramble. So the scramble for Africa happened, and now the British Empire looks like this. Nice. 
but not as nice as it could be. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's World War One. World War what? World War who, why you ask? Well, because an Austro-Hungarian prince was assassinated by some Serbian guy, Austria-Hungary went to war with Serbia because they thought Serbia did it. And so, as Germany is a good friend to Austria-Hungary, they also declared war on Serbia, which meant Russia, who was friends with Serbia, declared war on Germany and Austria-Hungary. And because Russia was friends with France, France declared war on Germany. France asks England if they want to help because they're kind of friends. England says, um, maybe, and stays neutral. But Germany has a plan. They invade neutral Belgium and Luxembourg to attack France. But England says, no, I don't think you will. England now owns this. And so the British Empire rose to its peak in 1921 and actually never had the sun set on it. That's facts. No nighttime. Ever. Anyway, the empire now owned a quarter of the world's land and over 412 million people, aka 23% of the world's population. Now that's a big pie.